Man, you know when daddy shows up. <laughs> yes. When daddy shows up, there is a change. Whew. Thank you, Master. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy days. Psalm 34, please. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Amen. Glory. Let's speak it together. I will bless the Lord at all times. Okay, you can go home now. <laughs> His praise shall continually be where? In my mouth. Man, you know, if you can really, truly keep God's praise in your mouth, you won't say something stupid. <laughs> Amen. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Now, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, and your imagination. So everything's going to make its boast of your total soul being in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be what? Glad, but the pride ain't going to hear it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. How many of you know when you truly seek the Lord, you know he hears? Amen. Amen. And delivered me from all my what? Fears. Fears. <laughs> Oh, happy days. Fears, right? Everybody hates fear, right? Praise God. What is fear? It's a power of deception, isn't it? Satan's greatest weapon is deception, and his power is fear, although deception is power in itself. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Anybody ever get in trouble? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> Praise God. It says, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, who have reverence, honor, and respect to him. The angel of the Lord encamps around. This angel is an angel. He's a warring angel. He can slay 180,000 people. And we get a legion of them. So what's your problem? <laughs> oh, the angel of the Lord encamps all around those who reverence, honor, and respect the Lord. And he does what? It says he delivers them. He delivers them. Then why doesn't he deliver everyone? Because not everyone is in position to be delivered. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, because there is no want, or that word means lack, to those who what? Fear him. Why? Because when you reverence and honor and respect the Lord, it means you are submissive and you are obedient. That means you are following whatever he's asking you to do. You are following him. And as you follow him, you prosper. Nothing good will be withheld from you. It says that the young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear, the honor, reverence, and respect to the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? So he's going to tell us one of the things that can really disrespect the Lord. Keep your tongue from evil. Remember, we started out, I will bless the Lord at all times. This praise will be continually in my mouth. <laughs> Why? Because it's our own tongue that defiles us and it's our own tongue that grieves the spirit. 
That's why many people still live a life of react instead of respond. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil, do good, seek peace, and what? And pursue it. Bless the Lord at all times. Seek him at all times. Position yourself in the fear of the Lord, which is the respect, honor, reverence. And what are we respecting and honoring and reverencing his presence? His word and his voice. And his name. We reverence those things. We reverence his character and who he is. That's one of the greatest things that you can show reverence and honor and respect to the Lord is to humble yourself and praise and worship him. That's why the word says that the Father, the Father Almighty looks for those who worship him in spirit and in truth. One of the things that bring disrespect in is an individual that refuses to worship. Amen? Amen? It says that there's no lack to those who reverence him, honor him, and respect him because they are guided and led by his spirit and they are surrounded by warring angels. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter four. I'll tell you the title in a second or two. First Thess two or four, I'm sorry. First Thessalonians chapter four. Is everybody there? Yeah. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. How you ought to walk? Walk and please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your what? Your sanctification. Wow. Your sanctification, which means your separation and distance. Sanctification is a separation and a distance between you and worldly influence. It is a position of purification. And again, what is sanctification? It is a separation and distance between you and worldly influence. It is a position of purification and sifting. It is a place of regeneration. It is a position of purification and sifting. It is a place of regeneration, cleansing, holiness, and fellowship with the Creator. It is a place of regeneration, cleansing, holiness, and fellowship with the Creator's presence, power, and truth. Fellowship with the Creator's presence, power, and truth, which is the anointing. Is everybody okay? Only this position allows access to every spiritual blessing. And sets us in heavenly places. It is a position that allows us access to every spiritual blessing and sets us in heavenly places. This position is the only position that releases us from carnality. 
so you can have an idea what the title is, Release from Carnality. <laughs> Carnality, flesh, the old man, the old character, offspring of Satan. This is the position that releases us. In verse 3, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? And holiness. Therefore, he who rejects us does not reject man, but God, who also has given us his Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 6. Sanctification is the separation and distance between you and worldly influence. It is a position of purification and sifting. It is a place of regeneration, cleansing, holiness, and fellowship with the Creator's presence, power, and truth. Again, only this position allows access to every spiritual blessing and sets us in heavenly places, which releases us from carnality. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 11. O oh, saints of God, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own emotional attachments. Hello. Now, in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be what? Open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial? Now Belial, I want you to know, is the head demonic force over the flesh. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I will be their God and they'll be my people if they do something. If they what? Come out from among them. That is separation, sanctification. And be what? Separated, says the Lord. And don't touch what's what? Unclean. Unclean. That defiles. Don't touch it with your mind, don't touch it with your tongue, and don't touch and agree with it. And then I will receive you. I'll be a father to you. You'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's that relationship we just talked about. And what is the fellowship with the Creator's presence, power, and truth? It is a position. Come out from among the worldly, sinful, perverse, influence of the flesh and carnality, by sanctification of the mind, will, emotions, and imaginations, desires, and lust, which, you know, in this, it's, the sanctification is causing us to avoid touching unclean things. We want to avoid touching and agreeing with anything that's unclean. So there must be a mindset of sanctification. In other words, in everything we think and what we do and even choices we make, that should be a separation, not according to carnality or worldliness or, or, or desire or emotion. It should be set on a decision that is aligned with the will of God, his word, and the leading of his spirit. But that cannot happen if there's not a process of sanctification. It just won't happen. Only in that position and process do we get released from car carnality. When then there is no longer a desire 
that desires are gone to use drugs, alcohol, smoke cigarettes, fornicate, pornography, lie, cheat, deceive. All of those things are relinquished in the area because we've been released from carnality in this position. The problem is the enemy tries to reattach us again. So we must be conscious of this. We must be alert to these things. Because the enemy's always knocking on your door. Stop answering it and don't say who's there. <laughs> Amen? You don't have to ask who's there. <laughs> we want to maintain a released position of carnality. Why? Because this carnality is works of the flesh and the old man. Romans 8. Oh, happy days. See, the devil loves to agitate, irritate, and bring us in the ring. If he can get you to react and not respond, we lose that position. If you're justifying for what you just reacted on, then you're further away than you realize. <laughs> Does everybody understand? If you justify what you just reacted on, you are further away than you realize. And that is a dangerous position. Very dangerous. Romans 8. That's what we call the butt ministry. But, but. But we're the head, not the tail, right? Very dangerous place to be. In verse 1, Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hello. He says something very important. Who do not walk according to the flesh, according to what? Carnality. But according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life. Anybody remember what the law of the Spirit of life is? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Amen. And Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do that in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the what? Righteous requirement. That means it takes your and my cooperation. That your righteous requirement or cooperation of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Totally different. For those living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. See, when a person gets offended, hurt, or whatever, if they're constantly thinking how they can re get back, that's flesh. See, the word says, forgive, bless, walk away. Why? Because then God will send coals of fire on them. Hello. See, so you've got to realize that when people mess with you, as long as you don't mess back with them, they mess with God. But people that are not in that position will want to react. They can't hold their emotional words, their emotional attacks, because they're further out of position than they realize. Verse 6, to be carnally minded is what? It's what? Death. Death. Wow. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is hatred, enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor can it be. 
So your carnal mind can never be saved. Amen? That's why you have a new mind. Thank God. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Again, a carnal mind, to be carnally minded is death. It's bitterness, envy, unforgiveness, offense, and so forth. It's works of the flesh. And why is that occurring? Because an individual has lost that position now. Swayed, moved out. Not even realizing it. This is where the enemy comes and speaks a specific word. I'm a good person. You know what he does? He's got you out of sanctification. Because he's put your eyes on you. I'm a good person. I don't deserve this. Pride. See, this is how the enemy operates. He tries to get us into that position where we're further out than we realize because we're looking at all of our good deeds and not his. That's when the enemy takes your eyes off the Lord. Now you can proclaim Jesus of every area, but you still can be out of position. Amen? Is everybody okay? In 1 John chapter 2. Man, I remember being in the world as a carnal head. And, uh, man, when things used to happen, I would stay up all night thinking, how am I going to kill this person? <laughs> and then when I finally fall asleep, I would wake up a different person. <laughs> but that was B.C., then I just have somebody else do it. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. First John chapter 2. Glory. Verse 15. Do not what? Do not what? Don't love the world. Or the what? Things of or in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, the love of the world has to do itself first. Because the word says that there are lovers of self. Lovers of money. Pride and arrogance. All of that arena. That's of the world, isn't it? So that means that the love of the Father is not in there. But the love of self is there. Does everybody get this? The love of self is pride. For in all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? It's of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So he says, do not love. What does he mean by don't attach, don't desire, don't trust, don't depend and don't connect to worldly carnality. Why? Because you cannot fulfill your call and you cannot fulfill his will. It's impossible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. See, the enemy's not stupid. He's been around a while. But if you maintain the presence of God, when he gets near you, he gets confused. Amen. That's why the word says, can't touch this. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Amen. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message of the cross is what? Foolishness. foolishness. To those who are what? Perish. To those who are what? Perish. 
Well, snap, because they're out of position. So the message of the cross, which is a message of truth, amen, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ, many are perishing because they don't believe the truth, this message. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of the sage? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. In other words, we preach death to yourself to have a new life. We preach the formula of the Spirit, the law of the Spirit, which is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That's what Jesus' example was. That's why he's the way, the truth, and the life. Because you can't follow without a fight, right? For the Jews request a sign, the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block, and to the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are what? Called. Are you called? Both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God in righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So the message of the cross promotes sanctification, righteousness, and redemption. And it releases us from carnality. Only if we follow. Again, everything is associated with cooperation. If there's not cooperation, there isn't a release. You can't have freedom without cooperation. Everything is about cooperation. And everything is about whether we respond to that cooperation or react to our old ways. Amen? Because we're either going to sow in the flesh or sow in the spirit. Colossians 3. We must be reminded of these things. That's why we fellowship, we gather together. The word says forsake not to assemble. Why? So we can be refreshed and reminded. Colossians chapter 3. You know, the word says that God rejects the prideful but gives grace, which is the plan of God, the plan of escape, to the humble. Humble. Humble is an area to where you realize that you are helpless without him. You are totally helpless. We're helpless. That's where we confess our helplessness. We're helpless without him. Amen? It says in verse 1, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are, are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, your thoughts, your everything, your attitude, your decisions. In other words, you're placing them before you on the things above, not the things of the earth. <clears throat> for you died. Everyone said, I died. And your life is hidden in Christ. When Christ, who is our life, now think about this. Christ, who is our life, 
In other words, we don't have a life. Our life is in Christ now, which separates us from humanity. We're no longer humanites. We're eternal lights. Amen? There's a difference. The world won't understand you because you live from another planet. <laughs> Amen? You're off planet even though you live here. You live in another realm, even though your body is in this realm. We're from an eternal place, living in a temporary place. But our life is sustained by eternal, not by temporary. That's why he said man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we're actually eating his words, which is food for me and you. So when I speak his words, I eat his words, and when I eat his words, I become him. So the more I speak, the more I eat, the more I eat, I become like him. Amen? For you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him where? In glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. See, I, I, I got to share something with you. We can't get it right now, but we're already in glory. We're already there. <laughs> but everything that is holding us here keeps us in a state that we're not there, but we are there. Does everybody get it? See, so we're already there. The word says something very powerful, that Jesus already came and fulfilled everything before anything was created. The world's already formed. Everything was done before. He, he fulfilled everything before he created it. Why? Because he's not bound by space and time. Amen? So he's already placed us in this place already. We're already there. But when you give up your last breath determines whether you stay there or not. <laughs> That's why as a book of remembrance, in case we forget. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. What is it? Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the what? The wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the what? Amen. The new creation who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and what? In all. Therefore, as elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, not short-suffering, <laughs> bearing with one another. I want to say that again. Bearing, in other words, you're putting up with one another. <laughs> and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint, shut up. <laughs> Against another... Even as Christ forgave you, you also must forgive them. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, not lust, love. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be what? And be what? And be thankful. Go to the book of Daniel. See, by putting on that new man, that will assist us in maintaining the release of carnality.
And we might maintain putting on that. You know, you got to put on a new man every day. It's not just once a week. Amen? Believe me, you might not know that you... <laughs> you might have forgot one day. You forget two days. Everybody knows you forgot. Amen? Amen? Daniel 12, verse 1, And at that time Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that time, and at that time your people shall be what? Delivered. Everyone will be delivered who is found where? Written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge technology shall increase. And we see that now. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and on the other river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, how long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven. And he swore by him who lives forever that it shall be for a time, times, and half a time, which is three and a half years. And when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. I want you to know that these words are being unsealed now. Because why? We're at the time of the end. Many shall be purified. Hello, that's considered sanctified. Made white and refined, but the wicked shall not, shall do wickedly. So we got to understand that right now in the sanctification and purification, the regeneration is increasing more and more for you and I. The world will hate you more and more. They won't be able to handle you. Because they're going to see something, send something, and even feel something that causes them to hate. Because remember, darkness hates the light. Amen? Why? Because darkness can't comprehend the light. And they are blinded to it. So they're going to hate you more and more and more. You'll see all kinds of things of Hatred, murder, accusing, racism, all kinds of things that are just persecuting Christians. Does everybody understand that? It is happening big time in the media, in the music, everywhere. It's all over. And he says, he says that many shall be purified, made white, refined. That's us. But the wicked, he ain't going to do that too. He will not purify them. He will not sanctify them. He will allow them to continue to do their wickedness. That's why you're seeing it all. So many times people are going, why isn't God intervening? He is on you. He's preparing you to overcome all of their influence. He will sift all of our weaknesses. He will bring us through a process of refining. He will remove all those things that have an eye in it. Many shall be purified, made white, refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand what's going on. But the wise shall understand. See, we understand what's going on. They don't. Because they're under control. But they're not under control by the Spirit. They're under control by demons. 
And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. Refining, sifting, perfecting. He's the perfecting of his called ones. This is what we're going through right now. What is he perfecting? He's purifying the saints. He's perfecting the saints. Only those that are faithful will go through this. The ones that are not faithful will avoid this, but they will become to associate more wicked. They'll become more greedy, more selfish, more I, more prideful. They won't allow the purification. Psalm 140. Psalm 140. Release from carnality. Hallelujah. Psalm 140. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of ass is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. Hello. They purpose to make you stumble. Do you ever notice that when you're trying to get off the drugs and alcohol, every drug dealer wants to offer you dope free? Everybody calls you up and says, man, they haven't get them together. Come on. They're offering all kinds of things. Come on, we're printing off mo new money. <laughs> See, there'll be a temptation in every area of any speck of your old life. Every speck of dust of your old life, the enemy will use to try and mislead you and lure you. who has purpose to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me in cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. How many of y'all know every day is a battle? Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. As for the head of those who surround me, let the evil of their lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. See, I told you. Let them be cast into fire, into deep pits that they rise not up again. Let not a slander be established in the earth, let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence and in your anointing. Ephesians 5. Glory. In verse 1, what does it say? Therefore be imitators of God as dear children. Can you do this without being released from carnality? No. No. You can fake it, but you ain't going to make it. <laughs> you can fake it all you want, but you ain't going to make it. Verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us, giving himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. 
But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have what? No fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. That's where the problem is. First of all, you've got to expose your own association with it before you can expose something else. Amen? We want to expose everything. That's why it's good to go to the Lord every day. Lord, expose those things in my life, especially things that I can't see. Expose them. Amen? And have no fellowship with the fruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because of what? The days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And don't be drunk with wine and booze and drugs, which is dissipation, but be filled with the what? Be filled with the Spirit of God. Speaking to one another in, si in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody where? In your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And submit to one another in reverence, honor, and respect to the Lord in the fear of the Lord. I'm going to close at Psalm 141. Release from carnality. Psalm 141. Psalm 141. Is everybody okay? Everybody getting this? What a price he paid for me and you to be released from carnality. It grieves my spirit when I see carnality come back into a person's life. And you can see glimpses of it and when they don't see it. Glimpses. Until it becomes full-blown. Verse 1. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense, the lifting of my hands as an evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. And do not let me eat of their delicacies. Let the righteous strike me, it shall be a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it, for all still my prayers against the deeds of the wicked. Their judges are overthrown by the sides of the cliff, and they hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the mouth of the grave, as when one plows and breaks up the earth. But my what? But my what? My eyes, my focus are upon you, O God, the Lord. And you I take refuge. Do not leave my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares they have laid for me and from the traps of the workers of iniquity. 
Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I escape safely. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you so much for releasing us from carnality. And may we maintain that position of release from carnality with no entanglements. Protect what has been spoken to us, Lord, and bring to remembrance, keep us sensitive when the enemy tries to snare us and reattach us so that we forgive, we bless, and don't react, but we respond according to your will. And let your blessings, let your presence and revelations be released to each and every one, increasing the anointing of Christ Jesus in everyone's life here that you may be honored and glorified and feared, reverenced in everything we do in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.